Hi guys, this is Charlie with Boxing Focus. Let's talk Adrian Broner versus John Molina Jr. Um, I'm a big Adrian Broner fan, which is, which may be surprising to 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 anybody who cares to listen, but people love to hate Adrian Broner. Um, he kind of comes across, obviously he's brash, he's loud, he's got this whole big brother persona going on with. Um, Floyd Mayweather, and he's, he he puts himself, he sets himself up to be knocked down in terms of the way he puts himself on the same pedestal that Mayweather's on. But this is a this is a guy who who is he is happy to challenge himself in the boxing ring. He is not stage managing his career. He wants to go in against the best fighters. He wants to fight the best and and try and be the best. Mayweather, Mayweather's career was pretty well stage managed. You can count on one hand the number of times he's taken a surprisingly challenging fight. I mean, obviously it's difficult at his level to really challenge himself, but when he was younger, he never... I mean, at 23 years old, Broner's jumped up two weight divisions, gone in with Malinaji, who's a very good, experienced fighter. He's no slouch. And then he's gone in with a killer in Maidana, at age 23. Maidana, at, a, at the peak of his powers... You know, it's, we should be lauding Adrian Broner for this. This is what we want in boxing. This is what we want the best upcoming fighters to want to do, to really take the bull by the horns and try, try and uh, shake up boxing. You know, this is a multi-weight world champion, a three-weight world champion at 23. It's, I mean, that's impressive. That's better than Mayweather achieved. And then, yeah, he cops all all of this criticism because he does put himself up there because he, he is loud and he dresses extravagantly and he says funny things in interviews. I mean, but I, at the same time, you've got this, this, this persona, this pantomime villain that he puts out there because obviously people love to, to, to see him lose. But there's, there's also a, 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 this fairly genuine guy who, who kind of appreciates where he is compared to where he was when he grew up. And you listen, listen to some to his interviews. There's almost always a tidbit, a little, you know, something of the real Adrian Broner in each interview. Fight Hype posted a video um, that confused all their readers because it was a video of Adrian Broner before the DeMarco fight, which was some time ago now. Um, and the, the last question he gets asked is, who, who are we going to see on Saturday night? Or what are we going to see in the ring from Adrian Broner? And, the, and his answer was, you know, just a special kid living his dream. All right, a bit arrogant calling himself special, but he is, he's talented. I don't even necessarily think that is arrogant. That's just, you know, him stating where, you know, his position in the sport. And then um, his other interviews, I think it was after the Taylor fight, he was going on about uh, you know, how he came from nothing and, and how he's happy to be there. And There, there is this, this guy there that really is quite a nice guy, quite a nice person, and, and a really appreciates the opportunity that he has and he was, he is trying to make the most of it by bringing us the best fights that he can get and he should be yeah, applauded for that in a way even if he is going to end up you know, losing and being in an, at fights that may be bad for his health but you know the Maidana fight after being so badly hurt in the second round he stuck in there for 12 rounds I mean I People were, were mocking him relentlessly for it, but I thought that was actually quite admirable. I mean, most fighters would have not stuck in there the way Adrian Broner did under that kind of pressure, being that badly hurt. You know, he gave it his all. He left it all in the ring, and that's that's what we want to see as fans. So, so that that's why a bit about why I'm a fan of Adrian Broner. Um, now, Adrian Broner's talented. He's got lightning quick hands. Um, He's talented on a level, in a way, that unfortunately John Molina Jr. will never be. And that's why I like Adrian Broner in this fight. Adrian Broner does have technical problems. He tries to use the shoulder roll, the Philly shell, kind of the way Mayweather does. One of the reasons that people compare them so much. But he uses it all the time, almost. And, and it, the thing is, it doesn't really work all the time. When you're at distance, to use the the... the the, you know the shoulder roll properly. You kind of have to be quite, you know, not square on. Kind of the opposite. You have to get your shoulder really far forward. And the problem with that is it limits. You know, with your hand down low, it limits what you can get done with your jab and with your left hand. 
if you open it up slightly, you know, you have to bring your hand up and you have to kind of change stance, which then it becomes a, a, a game of knowing when to, to, to switch. You've got to be very fluid at switching between the two, which is what Floyd Mayweather has mastered. Now, Broner tries to walk forward like this, so it not only does it limit his left hand, you know, his jab is possibly easier to pick up because it has to travel further, it has to travel from all the way down by his hip, as opposed to, you know, when you're more straight in, in a more conventional stance, there's a much shorter distance for because your hand's higher up and further forward. The right hand has to travel further because you, your, your shoulders are aligned back here. You know, you have to bring your shoulder forward as you throw the right, so you, the, the right hand has to travel a greater distance. Whereas again, from the conventional stance, it's up here, it's closer. Again, that's why May Mayweather's so great with his lead right hand, because his, his hand is, has got the minimum amount of distance to, uh, to travel once, he's got, you know, once his opponent steps into range. So, so Broner's contending with all those stylistic issues, but he's talented enough and he's fast enough that he can get away with it against the majority of guys. Um, but also, because he's doing the shoulder roll, it doesn't really lend itself to head movement, so he's straight up. You know, and you have to lean back, which again is it kind of limits your ability to get your, your your own punches off. It doesn't quite work, even though he tries to do it very aggressively. You can see he tends to be a bit better when he does switch into the conventional stance and boxes like that. Yeah, you know, which he will do from time to time in fights, but he doesn't really fluidly turn between the two when he needs to, and that that's one of the the big issues that he has to contend with. You know, his head movement isn't great often gets caught with his head up in the air and, and straight up, which ma makes him hittable, which makes for more exciting fights. But it's, it's not great for him. So I do expect John Molina to land some good shots. I do expect John Molina to be in this fight at points. But I think John Molina's going to wilt in the middle rounds. I think Broner's probably going to stop him you know, late in the fight, probably around 10th, 10th, 11th rounds, just because John Molina Jr. isn't that talented a fighter. Technically okay, but not great. Doesn't have great head movement. Isn't particularly good at anything. But he is, you know, he's got a good chin. And he sticks in the fight. But I think Broner punches hard enough and accurately enough that that will break. You know, he will break down as the fight transpires. At welterweight, I don't think Broner's got one punch knockout power. I think he has to break Molina down slowly. And, um, yeah. That, uh, and I would like to see Broner putting his punches together. When he did finally put his punches together against Taylor, he dropped Taylor, and he, he just didn't really do it enough during the fight, which again is a bit of a consequence of spending too long in, the, in this kind of Philly shell like, yeah, shoulder roll position. So, yeah, I'd like to see Broner in, but technically improve from where he's been recently. Um, but we've seen he's got a good chin, good heart, and he, he will fight He will fight hard, and, and I I think he's just going to prove too much for John. Um, so that's my opinion on the fight. Let me know if you think differently. If you uh, got any good insights, in, uh, and or if you think I'm just talking plain rubbish. I appreciate the feedback. This is Charlie with Boxing Focus.